This is Florida State running back Trey Benson. He's got so much juice, 92nd percentile, weight adjusted 40, 439 speed at the combine, 216 pounds. And when you think, you close your eyes and you think about what an NFL running back looks like, you think about huge quads, yeah, huge quads legs, <laughs> and that's exactly what Trey Benson has. He wasn't the total package. Uh, he had to leave Oregon after a knee dislocation, which is pretty serious issue for him. Went to Florida State, was never the bell cow there. They wanted to keep him on the perimeter. They wanted him to burst up field, and he created a lot of explosive plays. You're going to have to deal with a little bit of the dancing he does. The success rate wasn't always there, but in terms of just explosiveness and the ability to develop beyond that, I think that's the kind of upside that Trey Benson brings. It is truly amazing how much juice Trey Benson still has, despite, I believe this was back in 2021, he tore his ACL, MCL, lateral meniscus, medial meniscus, and his gracilis tendon, which is his hamstring. And then the next year, he forces a missed tackle on 51% of his carries. 80 forced missed tackles, according to PFF, on 157 carries. Jeez. Just crazy numbers. And even a year removed from that, as you said, at 216 pounds, a 4.3940, a 1.52 10 yard split, a mm -hmm. 74th percentile broad jump, 37th percentile vert. Quads for days. Yes. Man. It's weird. His narrow shoulders too, and it's just like this big balloon mm -hmm. lower body. Mm -hmm. And that almost because that of, of that leaner upper half, allows him to get skinny at times. But what I thought was the name of his game was he has this slow down and then acceleration element of his game, allows him to run with pacing, to win out in space, mm -hmm. to change defenders angles and ruin them because they don't expect a body of this size to mm -hmm. run that quickly, that fast. I have questions on top of that. But I just wanted to give him his praise yes. for being this crazy of an athlete, despite everything he's gone through in college. Yeah, he has like tremendous bursts and like that tempo that he plays with. You can see that out in space. And his success comes on these zone runs, second best in the class in terms of rushing yards over expected on these zone runs. 67% of his carries went towards the outside. So that's the name of his game and i don't hate that either if he if this is his role he's not going to be a bell cow and you just want to let him actually cook players give him the home run threat type of carries i think that's not a bad role for him but at the same time because of that knee injury he only has 349 collegiate touches there's a chance that with some more development more experience that he can play a little bit more controlled there's a little bit more variance to his game in terms of the type of touches he gets and then you can all, all of a sudden see a more bell cow type of uh player he has a size to do that he has the base in his legs to be able to do it it's just a little bit of a projection for him right now i felt he could work on staying balanced after and just before contact he has this tendency to like turn his hips at the end of upfield cuts again he loses that squareness which mm -hmm. leads to i think lesser second movements on contact i saw like doug martin i saw khalil herbert guys mm -hmm. and doug martin was you know a primary back i mean khalil herbert is this guy that we've seen in rotations a lot you said home run hitter often we think of that as the 510 185 pound back mm -hmm. this is six foot 216 home big run dude. big play threat that maybe can develop mm -hmm. into the lead ball carrier can develop into the feature back like you're saying and on top of that we got some workload in the passing game 21 targets last season 13 the year before that even more this season and a bunch of pass pro reps as well there was this really easy hands catch and awesome penny catch he made along the sideline against Clipson on a wheel route that he still then threw his shoulder back and twisted and turned along the sideline. So there's like some naturalness to his game. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think maybe with more reps, we see that naturalness come into play more as a runner. Just to put some numbers on the receiving game, 58th percentile in terms of receiving yards per game. I saw a couple drops out there. There was a couple issues in pass protection, just being able to identify where the pressure is coming, but that's also an inexperienced issue. So it's kind of like, will this develop with more reps? I think possibly so. And yeah, I see the same thing as you in terms of comps, Travis Etienne, Lamar Miller, Rashad Penny are kind of these bigger explosive backs that had varying degrees yeah. of success. And obviously injuries play a part of that as well. But yeah, I think this is like a classic late round two, early round three. You're not trying to make him Najee Harris is a big touch guy. You're kind of go into this 15 touches per game. And that's like one of the last points here. Only average 13.5 touches per game 
Uh, that's his most across a season. So that's not a whole lot here. And there's other backs in this class that are kind of stuck in this 12 to 15 touches per game. We'll see if he can kind of expand on that at the next level. Yeah, again, 94th percentile in force missed tackles per attempt. As a runner, 91st percentile in yards after contact. On top of that, just quickly, his pass pro. And I should say very few NFL prospects are great in pass protection. Most recently, we can point to Kyron w Williams being outstanding at it. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a ton of straight up pass for reps in 2023. There was one bad one against Pitt where there was a blitzer up the middle. It led to an incompletion. He held him off at first, but then got kind of pushed in the in back. And then Jordan Travis failed to hit an open receiver over the middle of the field. Another really bad one I felt against Louisville. But again, as you can say that, I did feel like he was comfortable as a receiver out in space, soft with his hands there. And as the NFL, struggles to create downfield explosive plays in the passing game. This can be a guy who creates explosive plays in the running game. Rashad Penny coming out of San Diego State in the first round is a perfect example of this. Not saying that Trey Benson is going to go in the first round. He's someone who has always had like a secondary runner with him, but was mm -hmm. always explosive plays mm -hmm. on the field. You hit one of those, it can change the course of a game. And Trey Benson might have that in his back. And almost every single team uses a tandem backfield approach. There's very few true bell cows. So I think that we just have to be more comfortable with, all right, the running back that we're drafting, he's getting 14 touches. He's not getting the 22 touches that we were used to out there. So uh, in the model, 77th percentile, totally fine. Nothing too crazy. Unfortunately, because he was in the committee, uh, he was only in the 49th percentile in terms of age and adjusted production. Uh, so he's he's fine. I think that his tape was better than his production. There's a lot of mouths to feed. Go watch our Johnny Wilson and our Keon Coleman videos yeah. as well. The quarterback runs a, a lot as well. So there were some issues in terms of like how we're scheming up touches. The 42% success rate is a little bit because he dances a little bit. But I think generally, I came away impressed. So I have an early round three grade on him. He's the RB2 for me pre-draft. Um, I would take him in this exact type of role. And like you said, some explosiveness out of this position is more valuable now just based off of uh, how defenses are playing against offenses. And just the raw numbers. I'm sure producer Waits has already put him up there, but 154 carries, 990 yards in 2022, 156 carries, 906 yards this past season. And Trey, I got to tell you, man, from one guy with big quads to another, <laughs> Pant shopping is not fun. Suit shopping, not fun. So look, I feel your pain, brother. All right, that does it. Go and watch the rest of the running back, wide receiver, quarterback, tight end videos that we have on the channel with all these NFL draft prospects. If you like this one, you'll like more of them. So spend some time on the YouTube page. Check in the next one.